Before I start today, I want to make a request. I want you to subscribe to our channel if you have not already. I want you to press the bell icon for the notifications. Now, why am I asking you this? It's not because of the usual reasons. It's not for the channel growth or whatever reasons everyone permits. It's because we are living the greatest story of our times, the greatest geopolitical story of our times. And we'll be doing a lot of videos on this aspect. We've already done a few on Swaraja direct line, even on Swaraja's standpoint. But this is the greatest story of our lifetimes after the Cold War, which lasted for around 45 years. We are already in the beginning of a new Cold War. And I do not want you, our subscribers, to miss a single video we do about this issue. So that's why I request you to subscribe. Now, when we talk about the US-China rivalry or the US-China Cold War, it's not just about the weapons. Because when you go back to the Cold War mentality, you keep thinking nuclear arsenal, which the USSR and the United States kept focusing on. You actually talk of a lot of things, something that encompasses everything, the economics, the geopolitics, and even the defense system. Today, I'll be taking up two aspects. I'll be taking up the finance and technology aspect of it. And there are three things I want to discuss. Now, yesterday, Donald Trump, President Donald Trump, he signed a pair of executive orders that prohibited U.S. residents and companies from doing business with Chinese-owned TikTok and WeChat apps beginning 45 days from now. Now, TikTok is owned by ByteDance and WeChat is owned by Tencent. These are two big, big companies of China, big tech companies of China. President Trump signed a pair of executive orders barring anyone from dealing with these companies. Now, what happened after this executive order was signed? Just to give you a uh, perspective, Tencent's shares fell by 10%. The holdings fell by 10% on the market. It lost $46 billion in market value just because of this one executive order. Now, why does this, why does this executive order come into play now? This is the first aspect we're going to discuss. Now, one might say that Donald Trump, after the coronavirus outbreak, after tensions in the South China Sea, and with the elections coming up in the United States less than three months from now, he wants to make the China, that Trump is going against China, as no other president in the history of the United States has, as his narrative. And he's not wrong on all fronts. For instance, if you talk about TikTok, the United States has the same concerns with TikTok as India had, the data sovereignty. Now, TikTok does tell the United States that the data of the US uh, users is not stored in China, it's stored in Singapore or somewhere else. But the problem is, even then, the parent company of TikTok, in this case, by, in this case ByteDance, it has the access to the data and it could share with the Chinese government. So Donald Trump now wants either TikTok to be sold off to Microsoft or any other US company by the 15th of September, or he will ban it as India has. Now, some in India might be excited by this prospect that, oh, let's have Microsoft buy TikTok and then we can cancel out the ban. I must tell you that's not a very wishful thinking. That's not the very right way to think about it because even if the operations of TikTok go to Microsoft from, let's say, ByteDance, the revenue will be shared. So even if Microsoft owns TikTok, if reports are to go by now from Bloomberg, the revenue will be shared with ByteDance, which is, again, originating in China. So one hand, Donald Trump wants TikTok banned. Now let's come to WeChat. Now WeChat is also a very significant app. You can do without Chola Bhaturas in Delhi. You can do without Makki Ki Roti and Sarso Ka Saag in Punjab. You can do without a Pav Bhaji or a Vada Pav in Mumbai, but you cannot do without WeChat in China. It's that critical to the existence of the civilians there. It is the world's first super app. And we discussed about this, me and my colleague Karan Kamli, we discussed this on Swar uh, Swarajya Direct Line. I'll put a link in the description. But to further talk about WeChat, it's the first super app in the world. What is a super app? An app which encompasses all other apps. Now, what happens when US President Donald Trump says that WeChat cannot do business in the United States? It raises questions for the companies, the American companies that are using WeChat in China. So to give you a very simple example, today you order your coffee via Zomato or via Swiggy. Starbucks, for instance, in China, it has its app, its mini app within the bigger WeChat app. So tomorrow China could pull the plug on American companies or American businesses listed within the WeChat app. This is one consequences that could happen. 
Now, what the reasons are being given for these two executive orders, TikTok and WeChat, that the data of the Americans is at risk, the national security perspective comes into play. Now, the executive order that has been signed, it's uh, could lead to punishment if a company purchases ads on the apps or agreements that are made on the TikTok and the WeChat website. It has also to do something with the hosting of these apps on the App Store and the Google Play Store. And even though things are not very clear now, if a citizen of the United States downloads the app, one of the two apps, he could also be reprimanded for that. So there's no lot enough clarity on how these uh, sanctions will work out, but they are in the process of being decided and they will be defined by the U.S. Commerce Secretary, according to a Trump administration official. Now, this is TikTok and WeChat. Now, let me come to the third big thing that President Donald Trump has ordered. He's ordered that the Chinese companies listed on the U.S. stock exchange, they'll be restricted unless they comply with the U.S. audit requirements under a plan which has been recommended by the Trump administration earlier this week. Now, you might say that what is with the Chinese companies being listed on U.S. stock exchange and where is the problem? I'll take you back to 2008, 12 years ago. The world was coming out of Lehman crisis. The United States' economy was in doldrums, so was Europe's. So what happened then? Chinese companies, they saw it as a good point to invest in the United States, but it wasn't that simple for Chinese companies to get listed on the U.S. stock exchange because of a number of compliances that were there. So what did they go for? Bigger companies in the Chinese mainland, they merged with the smaller companies in the United States, which were listed on the U.S. stock exchange. And that made a reverse merger. So a bigger company in China collaborated with a smaller but listed company in the United States, and it led to a reverse merger. So the Chinese companies had access to US money, investor money, investments, and they made uh, they actually hosted great significant amount of investments. But what happened around 2011, 12, 13, 14? Suddenly investors in the United States realized that the companies they were investing in, they range from coal power plants to electric vehicles to everything you can think of. They figured that the companies weren't doing as well as they were being told they are doing. So investors were starting to lose money and a lot of people lost a lot of money. Perhaps this warrants a different video, but I'll just uh, brief you a bit more about it. A lot of people were actually investing in fake or fabricated Chinese companies. The returns were fabricated, the revenues were fabricated, the profits were fabricated. Now, what has enabled Trump to sign this latest uh, executive order on Chinese company listed in the U.S. stock exchange is a rival of Starbucks or the so-called rival of Starbucks. This was Luckin Coffee. It was a, supposed to be a rival to Starbucks in China and Chinese aren't big on coffee. So everyone thought that Luckin.co, another coffee outlet similar to Starbucks, it would do great numbers in China. Investors poured in their money. But turns out that employees of Luckin, they fabricated more than $300 million in sales after 11 months of its IPO. So imagine you are an investor in Luckin Coffee, a Chinese company, you invest, and a year later you find out that sales worth $300 million were fabricated. This is why Trump is going after the Chinese companies and they, they all they want is to comply with the audit requirements, which will be put forward in the future. So TikTok, WeChat, and restricting Chinese companies on the US stock exchanges are the three big push by the Trump administration in this ongoing Cold War with China. But no big steps are without consequences. And I want to discuss two big steps here. For long, our internet has been without borders. TikTok originated in China, Indians embraced it. Google originated in America, Indians embraced it. The internet has been without borders. Netflix, they do not need borders. They need access, which is made possible via the World Wide Web. Now, what has Trump administration done? It has changed this to it is quo on digital, uh, let's say digital apps or social media platforms. If it's okay for an American nation to ban TikTok, how long before China also starts banning Google or Facebook, though they already have, but what about other businesses? What if other uh, regimes tomorrow, let's say Saudi Arabia, they start banning Facebook and Instagram and Twitter where they have a number of users. So all these social media platforms that have been ruling the world for the last decade or so, they will now be thinking, and most of them are American, that what if the internet has borders and what if they could be banned from other countries tomorrow for their wrongdoings? This is the first consequence. The second consequence, talking about 
uh, the U.S. stock exchanges and uh, Chinese companies being listed there. China has already been frustrated by the U.S.'s dominance, the U.S.'s dollar dominance, even though it holds uh, liabilities worth trillions of dollars. China has been frustrated by U.S.'s dominance in world trade when it comes to sanctions, because now companies and individuals would be sanctioned against doing business with WeChat and TikTok. So China wants to somehow solve this issue. So where does this happen? If you remember a video we did on China's digital currency, I'll put the link in the description. We spoke about SWIFT. We spoke about how every transaction in the world has to go through Brussels, where SWIFT coordinates all the messages, all the transactions. The messages are sent from one financial institution to another. And this institution is dominated or influenced by the United States. Now, with the sanctions coming in against the national security law that has come in Hong Kong, the officials involved, WeChat or even TikTok or the parent companies, China wants to go to another alternate payment system which can work across the world. And this is called CITS or SIPS, which is Cross-Border Interbank Payment System, which is owned by China. It facilitates payments in one. But not just that, China is also testing its digital currency in its top four banks. So already China is responding to the problem of sanctions. Now, some might go all the jingoistic way and say, oh, this is the uh, this is the victory of China or this is the end of the United States or vice versa. It won't be that simple for China to unshackle from the dollar. But this is a very critical beginning to present an alternate payment mechanism against SWIFT, which is going to be SIPS in that case, and also to opt for a digital currency. Do watch our video, which I'll be linking below on digital currency to get greater clarity on the issue. So all in all, the financial and tech cold war between the United States and China, it's starting from the social media platforms and apps, which is TikTok and WeChat, uh, spreading to the Chinese companies listed on the US stock exchanges and is now going to have consequences across the globe for American giants, the likes of Google, Facebook, Twitter, Netflix, the GAFA, Amazon even. And this will be very interesting to see. Now, if this is an election gimmick by Donald Trump, or is it something serious, is it something long-term? That is one thing we are going to watch out for. But for now, one thing is for sure, that the US and China are in the middle of a Cold War, and this is perhaps the greatest story of our lifetime, and the one most critical. Thank you.